Good morning, church. Happy Saturday. It's good to be with you here today. And as always, we have plenty of good stuff to talk about, and by the grace of God and His provision, we will get through several good portions of Scripture. First one is Exodus 17, 8 to 15, where the Amalekites attack, and Joshua is leading the armies while Moses is up holding the staff of God over the over the battle. And God sets it up so that if Moses lowers his arms, the battle is lost. If he keeps his arms up, they win. And Moses, on his own strength, can't do it. He needs some help. And so Aaron and Hur come alongside him, keep his arms aloft. They move a rock under him so that he can sit and support himself. And through their help, Joshua is able to win the battle because God's conditions for victory are met. And this reminds us that, you know, you know, physically we don't need people to hold our arms up so that a battle is won. This is a one-time scenario. Nothing like this ever happens again. But in our life, we need people around us that will lift us up, support us, encourage us, because the, the weight is too much for one person to bear. The battle rages on too long. Mm -hmm. So if you're a lone wolf kind of person, there's no such thing as lone wolf Christianity. We need people around us, supporting us, upholding us. Mm -hmm. And this idea carries on into Exodus 18 when Jethro comes to visit Moses with Moses' family. They've apparently, um, through all this, they, they weren't there with him in Egypt when he was walking through the plagues. They were with Jethro being kept safe from all that. And so Jethro brings them to see Moses. And in this, he sees Moses trying to manage this crowd of two million people all, all alone, all by himself. And Jethro says, what are you doing? What you're doing isn't good. There's no... Um, there's nothing good that can come from this. And so he uh, advises Moses to appoint leaders of 10, 50, 100, 1,000, and then he'll keep the big stuff. And this reminds me that, you know, wherever you are in the process, maybe you're a leader of 10. The church might call that a small group leader today. Or maybe you're one of those 10 being led Whatever it is, every part is integral, whether it's leading well in the area you're assigned, whether it's being led well. Hebrew says, don't make it a burden for your leaders. Make their job joyful. Uh, be good at being led. And to the leaders, don't provoke them to wrath. Be a good and a faithful leader. Delegation is critical. In Acts chapter 3, uh, we also see something about being faithful. And I think this is one of, one of my favorite little encounters. Um, you know, in James and in other places, we're told, if we have material gifts to give and we see people in need, we are obligated to give them. But if we don't, oh, there's my Abigail. Come, Abigail, you can come say hi. hi. <laughs> um, but if you don't give and you have stuff to give to people in need that's a sin but sometimes we're in a situation where i don't have anything to give i don't have any opportunity so then what do i do well the first thing is to remember that you always have something to give um, and they said we don't have gold or silver to this lame man who's begging and so he says look at us and they uh, heal him what they do have is faith. They give what they have. And so the faithful Christian always has faith. Um, so don't think that you are ever in a situation where you have nothing to provide. Finally, the big one is in Exodus 17, 1 to 7, where the Israelites are out of water. They're complaining. They're worrying. And Moses names that place Massa, testing Meribah complaining and where God provides water out of the rock and this encounter is referenced a couple times in scripture and in surprising ways 
1 Corinthians 10.4 says that the rock that Moses got water from was Jesus. It was the Christ. And they drank spiritual water that day. Uh, so we see a location of Jesus in the Old Testament. Deuteronomy 6.16, 6, part of Moses' final commands is don't test God like you did at Massa. Don't test God. And then Jesus grabs that out of Deuteronomy 6 and Matthew 4, 7, when Satan is trying to tempt him, he says, don't test the Lord your God. Scripture is our defense against the enemy. God is always with us and ready to provide even in seemingly impossible situations. So let us not be in the habit of testing God, saying, oh God, if you're with me, then you'll do this. God, show me you love me by doing this. We are advised against testing the Lord our God, but rather asking him, God, please provide for me. If you don't, certainly I'll perish in this situation. So let's continue on, church, knowing that wherever you are, you have something to give because you are a faithful child of God. And that in every situation, even in the bleak one, the Lord our God is there ready to provide if we will just look for his provision. I love you, church, and we'll talk to you soon.